You're gonna dance, and then I will judge whether I deem your performance film-worthy. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're looking at the most shocking and brutal twists and turns in The Gentleman. You're up to something, Eddie? Never. Number 10, The Arrangement. Sorry to disturb you. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Susie Glass. If you saw the 2019 movie, you'll have been expecting this revelation. But the introduction to the Glass Empire and its huge scope remains one of the show's most impressive moments. While roaming the grounds of Halstead Manor, Eddie encounters Susie Glass for the first time, and she explains to him her business interests in the estate. He was making five million pounds in cash a year, plus profit share. Excuse me? Five million pounds. Well, I'm guessing that wasn't from yogurts and burgers, Miss Glass. They drive to the farm and she brings him to a shipping container with the real farm hidden underground. And being that you said you have a substantial share of the market, one would assume substantial means half or more. That means this is a very small cog in a much larger machine. We learn that great houses throughout the UK are being used to hide this enormous manufacturing process, just like Matthew McConaughey's illicit empire in the film. Number nine, Jethro. Uh, he's got OCDR, Jethro. Takes my while to get going, but once he does, there's no stopping him. Following a climactic scene that we'll get to later, the Hornemans and Susie Glass have a witness they need to deal with. Eddie doesn't want any more bloodshed, so goes to great lengths to arrange the witness Jethro being allowed to leave the country. We're not gonna kill him. You got any better ideas? They hunt Jethro down and keep him on the farm for days until Eddie organizes everything, getting himself seriously wounded in the process. That boat's gonna take you to a merchant vessel which will get you to Australia. Finally, Jethro is put on a ship heading to Australia, but the audience sees that Susie has betrayed Eddie. She sent her cleaner Felix to murder Jethro despite Eddie's wishes, unbeknownst to him. Get yourself a warm cup of tea. <laughs> Number eight, the heir. I hereby leave to my son, All right. um, Edward Bonham. At the beginning of the series, the Hornemans are called back to Halstead Manor as the previous Duke of Halstead is on his deathbed. He passes, and Freddie, the eldest son, expects the title and estate to go to him. Sorry, again for me, old chap. I leave to my son, Edward Horneman. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry this has happened to you. Often in British law, eldest sons will inherit, and there's no way to change this unless a title has a special clause in it. The Halstead title does, and to everybody's shock, Eddie is named the new Duke, despite being second eldest. I'm the firstborn son, yeah? That means technically, the title goes to me. Now that's not just me saying it, because it's what I want. This is clearly the best choice as Freddy's enormous outburst shows, as he rants and raves for minutes on end about how furious he is to be passed over. Great, he's coming back, perfect. Absolutely not, no, 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 no. Number seven, Tony Blair. A large shipment of product goes missing when Jimmy is bamboozled by a woman named Gabrielle, who manages to steal his van. Uh, can I get a banana milkshake? To make up the difference, the mob needs to steal a car for some Eastern European gangsters, the leader of whom is named Tony Blair after the ex-Prime Minister. We've been doing business with Tony Blair for a number of years, but he's not exactly nuanced. The American equivalent would be a gangster named George Bush in a seriously bizarre moment. What up? Tony Blair. He's a cost of an Albanian. Tony Blair was like a savior to those guys back in the day. It's a very popular name. Worse, while they work on stealing the car, Freddy runs distraction and, against everybody's advice, pretends to be a Russian oligarch. No, 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 none of this is going to work for me. When we spoke, Gary, I told you I wanted something fast. It turns out to be all for nothing, too, when they're forced to return the car to the rival gang because it contains a small fortune in, shall we say, illicit substances. Number six, De Groot. Who's supposed to be running things, don't they? A real piece of work named Florin De Groot. The glasses distribution chain is affected when their man on the inside, De Groot, wants a bigger sum of money to persuade customs officials to look the other way. Oh, Susie, Eddie, it's so good to see you. Susie and Eddie explore alternate options, with Eddie letting a group of travelers, the wards, set up on his land in exchange for becoming a new cog in the mob's distribution machine. But when the wards are framed for theft, suspicion lands back at De Groot's door. Eddie and Susie head over to talk to him, interrogating him by slipping poison into his food and withholding the antidote. What is that? The antidote. 
An antidote for what? For the poison that's currently sitting in your system. It's grisly to watch them demand information from him, and even worse when DeGroat reveals that one of Susie's closest allies is a rat. It should be fine within the hour. Number five, Freddy's pitch. Good evening, Freddy. Glad we bumped into each other. Actually, I wondered if you and I might have a quiet word. It's about my brother. When he learns about the glass business, Freddy starts spending way too much time with Jimmy, learning about how the product is cultivated. Your brother's made his position very clear to me, Freddy. What I'm struggling to understand is how you fit into all of this. He then brings a pitch to Susie to start growing a new strain that he thinks could take over the world, telling her that if she wants him in charge of the business instead of Eddie, since Eddie is trying to leave, he'll step aside and let Susie send someone to get rid of his brother. He would then inherit the estate. Do you know who that is, Freddy? That's my brother. She doesn't entertain the idea for a moment, though, shocked that Freddy would offer to betray his brother like that when her own brother means the world to her. And I'll do anything for him. You might want to think about that. Number four, Jack's fight. How much do you know about this guy you're up against? I've studied his fights, know his record. Looks can be deceiving. Oh, one rings around him, too. Speaking of Susie's brother, Jack Glass is a popular boxer who fights in the family's club Glass Knuckles. He gets into a few scrapes earlier on, namely getting caught in flagrante with the girlfriend of the Glass's money launderer. But Susie's devotion to Jack never wavers. His record might be three wins and 30 fights, but all 27 of those losses are fights he's thrown. When Eddie tries to go with a different laundry operation run by Henry Collins, Collins sets into motion a plan to take the entire business by force. He starts with Jack, though, paying off a violent rival boxer to brutally attack him in the ring, which nearly kills him. I'm not gonna kill him out of respect for you, but I am gonna hurt him, so you know I'm serious. It was shocking to watch Henry threaten Susie while she's powerless to help Jack, who ends up comatose for the rest of the show. <laughs> Number three, bidding war. As you know, it was a very competitive market, and uh, we certainly went the highest bid. In the final episode, Bobby Glass is selling his business. Eddie and Susie are sent to talk to the interested parties, all the rival operators we've met so far in the series, including Johnston and Sticky Pete. But it culminates in Eddie approaching Susie himself and deciding that he really does want to invest in the business after all, since it's no dirtier than the things his family's been doing to stay rich for generations. Have you managed to pull together the necessary funds? We pulled together a significant amount. He teams up with Henry Collins to gather enough capital to make a rival offer, and then orchestrates the downfall of the rival bidders Michael Corleone style. Leading to Uncle Stan's arrest for multiple tax evasion offenses and the freezing of all of his assets. We see it all play out, and Eddie and Susie ultimately succeed. There's no turning back now. You're not buying the operation. You're investing in it, so together we can expand our interests. Number two, Bassington's collection. There's a perfectly reasonable explanation for all of this, and it is nothing that will upset anyone unless they are unbelievably oversensitive. Earlier on, Eddie's trying to get out of the game and wants to point the glasses to another estate they can use to conduct their business. He settles on the new Lord Bassington and makes the introductions, but Bassington has a particular interest that puts their deal on ice. He gives Eddie and Susie a tour of his private museum, dedicated to the life and times of Adolf Hitler, whom he's obsessed with. Adolf Hitler. They might be criminals, but they have to draw the line somewhere and refuse to deal with Max after he presents them with the crown jewel of his collection, Hitler's missing appendage. If it wasn't for the war, he'd be remembered with the likes of Monet. And I'm in possession of the largest collection of his work outside of Switzerland. The item is later eaten by a dog, and YouTube won't let us show you any of it. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, chicken dance. Shoot, show, go. As well as the business, Susie and the Hornemans are initially entwined because Eddie needs her help clearing Freddie's eight million pound debt. <laughs> 
No. She negotiates with Tommy Dixon, and he agrees to reduce Freddy's debt in exchange for him doing a chicken dance in costume. But Tommy doesn't think Freddy's taking his humiliation seriously enough. He's not embodying the true essence of a chicken. I want you to be a chicken. I want you to feel it. I want you to transform into a chicken. He grinds Freddy down while Eddie and Susie watch, and then things take an unexpected turn. What are you doing? That's not how a chicken walks. Come on! Come on, pack! Freddy returns with an antique hunting shotgun and murders Tommy then and there. Hey, Tommy. Who's the chicken now? Freddy! This incident haunts them for the rest of the show, as the gang eventually returns to the estate for revenge in the finale. Let us know in the comments what your favorite Guy Ritchie movie is. Spoken like a true gentleman. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.